In this video, we'd like to walk through some of the specialized tools that you will need from when installing a mini split or a VRF system. Now, this is not a complete comprehensive list. There will be tools that you will find that will help you in your daily tasks that we may not cover in this video. So this is intended to be a minimum recommendation of the tools that you need to stock. First and foremost, you're gonna need a refrigerant manifold set. This set needs to be rated for the refrigerant you're working with, which in our market is R410A refrigerant. It needs to have heavy duty vacuum rated hoses so you can pull an evacuation through it. And if you're doing both mini split work and VRF work, you really need two different dedicated sets of manifold gauges. That's because on mini split products, you're gonna use a POE oil, and on VRF products, you're gonna use a PVE oil. And cross-contamination of those oils can cause a system failure if too much of one is mixed with the other. Now, while some technicians still love to have the analog manifold set, other technicians are using refrigerant probes, which digitally pair to their smart device and do all the readings and uh, measurements that a normal gauge set would do. The advantage of using a digital probe is obviously there's no hoses, so there's less of a risk of cross-contamination of oil or refrigerant as this cannot hold anything in the system. Moving up here, you're gonna wanna have a good flaring tool. Now the best type of flaring tool is an eccentric style flaring block. A Couple of highlights on this one specifically that we use. You see that it has the fittings for all the different size copper that you might work with, and it has a sliding stop. This stop is designed to set the height of the copper inside the flaring block. Simply bring the copper up until it deadheads against this stop, and you've got the copper elevated enough to make a good flare. Now, as you look at the flare, one of the important things to note is that in here is the cone. This is the needle that's gonna drive down and make your flare. You want a flaring block or a flaring tool that as it comes down, that cone orbits in an eccentric pattern. It makes a more even flare with less damages or cracks. The other thing that you want is a flaring block that has a clutch. What the clutch does is as soon as the flare is completed, the clutch will snap, releasing tension so that you don't over torque or overstress the copper in your flaring system. There's several different options out there, but again, an eccentric style flaring block and tool which is made for R410A refrigerant is a must. The next thing that you should carry is a flare gauge or a flare checker. This device here is gonna determine if the flare is the proper size to eliminate potentials for leaks or other damages that may occur. So once you've made the proper size flare, simply insert it into the right opening and it should not pass through. If it were to pass all the way through, the cone of the flare is not big enough and you're going to have a leak in the future. So again, use a good flare gauge to make sure that your flare is built properly. Some simple tools that you may not have thought of that you need to carry when you're making a flare is some synthetic lubricant. When you make the flare, you're gonna place the flare nut on the copper. What you should do before putting the flare nut on the copper is lubricate the outside of the copper tubing with the synthetic oil. This way, as you tighten down the flare nut with a torque wrench, you run less of a risk of the uh, flare nut binding against the copper and twisting and damaging your copper. Several different ways to do it, whether you like a spray lubricant, you like to be able to use a cotton swab to apply the lubricant around it, or some manufacturers make a lubricant in a pen that you can actually draw the shape around the outside diameter of the copper. Moving on, you'll also need an adjustable torque wrench. Several different styles are available. Whichever ones you like are the ones you should use. The preference I have here is one that can be adjusted by releasing the bottom nut, setting it to the proper torque value, and then locking the nut in place to make sure that you stay at that value. And it comes with different size heads for different size flare nuts. So you place it on and make your move until you hear the click and you know you've reached your torque value. A good torque wrench is essential for any mini split or VRF application. Failure to torque the nuts down to the proper value means you're going to have a refrigerant leak as it eventually backs itself off of the fitting or over torquing it can actually damage and crack the flare nut itself. We've seen both. So be advised, look at the manufacturer specifications, look for what torque values you need and set it accordingly. When it comes to prepping your copper, you need to make sure that you have several different tubing cutters. This is just one size here that you can put on, twist up, 
as it bites into the copper, twist the tubing cutter around, turn it again, twist it, turn it, and on every rotation, give it another quarter turn to bring the wheel in. You might need several different sizes, everything from this large size to the small imp size cutters, depending on the service clearance that you have around it. After you've cut your copper, you're going to need a good deburring tool. This is the pen style deburring tool. You can put the copper or you can put the uh, deburring tool right inside the copper and as you spin it around, it'll shave off any nicks or burrs. The important part about doing this is that anytime you wish to deburr the copper, it should be made in the downward position so that any of this debris that you see falling out is falling out of the system and not into the system. You're going to want to have a couple of adjustable wrenches to take service valve caps off to make any other adjustments that you may need. You're going to need a good set of hex keys. The important thing here when you're working with mini splitter VRF is they must be metric hex keys as the service valve stems are all going to be metric and you will not be able to get that with your standard hex keys. You're also going to want a Schrader core removal tool. When you want to evacuate the system of moisture, you want to be able to put this on. You want to twist the end to loosen up the Schrader core and pull it back to completely remove the Schrader core. This will speed up the evacuation and charging process. When you're done, you can close this valve here, take the back off to inspect your core. You can add your refrigerant to the fitting here. Put this back on now that you have refrigerant in the system. Open the center, press the Schrader core in, and then retighten it. These are a must. Another required tool that you've got to have on mini split and VRF systems is a quarter to five sixteenths adapter. Our hoses are quarter inch and all mini split manufacturers and VRF manufacturers utilize a five sixteenths inch fitting. So you need to have the adapter to connect to your manifold set if your hoses are not already 5 16 Several styles are available whether you want a straight or an offset fitting at a 45 or a 90 degree. Just depends on the cabinet that you're working on and where your connections need to be made. Another tool that comes in very handy is a cable stripper. You can use this to put over top of your shielded cable. You can run it through and the little blade in the center will strip the jacketing back to allow you to make easy connection to your wiring. When you're evacuating the system, you're going to need a good micron gauge. A good quality micron gauge is something that you should be able to take care of. You should be able to access the sensor to be able to clean it occasionally to clean out debris. This one here happens to Bluetooth to your mobile device or your tablet so that you can watch the evacuation on your device. You can set alarms so that your device will go off to let you know when it's reached its target micron level for you to come back and investigate the system. This allows you the freedom to be able to go and put away some tools, clean up some job site materials, do other things you need to do while the evacuation is occurring. You're not just standing and watching a gauge. You're going to need a good true RMS voltmeter, one that has all the settings possible. You're going to need AC voltage, DC voltage, amperage. You're going to need ohms. You're going to need continuity. You're going to need a diode check. And you're going to want it to be true RMS. You're going to want one that has all of the features that you like. There's several to choose from, but an essential part is you must have standard leads and you must have micro leads. A lot of the connectors on our mini split and VRF systems are very small and the larger leads that you see here will simply not get into the back of the Molex connectors where these micro leads will. You're going to need two different nitrogen regulators. The only one we have here on display is a standard nitrogen regulator. Notice that this one does allow you to go up to 1,000 PSI because that's when we do our triple pressurization test. We're going to pressurize our systems to up to 600 PSI. A standard nitrogen regulator that might only go up to two or 300 is not going to be able to give you a reliable pressure test to make sure all your flare fittings and all of your braze connections are leak free. This is just a best practice. It's always a great idea to have a magnetic parts dish nearby. So as you take the screws out of the system, you have the ability to store them in a place where you won't lose them. You want to make sure whatever you take out goes back into the unit so that the unit's secure, stable, and no insects or rodents can get into the unit because of a cover plate that was left off. Another simple little tool that's out there is something that you can find in the electrical section of most of your hardware stores or supply houses. This is an electrician's screw starter. And this can be very handy when you're wiring up control wiring. A simple twist of the end 
loads a spring. You can take your control screw, place the screw starter in, give it a push down, the spring will engage, and now you can start the screw without having to worry about dropping it in the control panel. You're going to need a good quality recovery machine. If you're removing an old system, you're going to need to recover the refrigerant out of it. The brand you choose is up to you. There's several out there. I prefer ones that are digitally driven so that you can use an extension cord to power them up and they're less susceptible to problems with voltage spikes or drops. You're also going to need a vacuum pump, a good quality vacuum pump with a built-in check valve so that in the event of a power failure, the check valve closes and you don't suck moisture back into the system. The recommendation is a, a two-stage vacuum pump that has a gas ballast for quick evacuation something that is quick and easy to change the oil on, and one that will allow you to pull the system down quickly. One of the most important things to remember about vacuum pumps is the oil is essential, so you always need clean vacuum pump oil. It's always been a trade recommendation to change the vacuum pump oil after every single use. Your frequency of changing it will let you decide, but know the cleaner the vacuum pump oil, the faster you're going to be able to evacuate the moisture out of the system. This next tool that we want to talk about is really only for the service side of the business. But if you're in the service side, you're going to want to purchase an inverter phase checker. This is designed to hook up to the machine to check the output of the inverter board to make sure that it's sequencing the inverter driven compressor in the right manner. A series of LED lights will come on to light up to let you know that the board is operating properly and it's a quick diagnostic tool that can save you a lot of time when testing an inverter circuit. The next thing that we're going to want is a good quality refrigerant scale. There's several options out there, which one you prefer is up to you. The one that I like most of all has solenoid ports on each side. So we can hook a manifold hose up here. We can hook a hose to our tank. We can program in the exact amount of refrigerant we want in the system. Hit run, the valve will open. It'll measure the flow of refrigerant going through. And when the right volume of refrigerant has entered the system, it'll shut itself down so we can't overcharge the system. Now there's a couple tools here that we didn't have for the video shoot that you might want to have handy. One would be a hydraulic style tubing bender. Would be a great device to help you bend soft copper into nice smooth radius elbows so that you don't have to worry about kinking of the line which would cause a pressure drop or a restriction. In some places, in some areas, you might need to have the opportunity to swedge a copper pipe together. So a good hydraulic swedging kit or a manual swedging kit would be great which allows you to insert a rod into the piece of pipe, use the hydraulic force or a hammer to bend it, to swedge it out to a larger diameter so that you can put two pieces of copper together without a coupling. Again, this is not a complete list of every tool that you need, but it's a highlight of some of the tools that you may not carry on a regular basis that will make your mini split and VRF installations successful. For service manuals and other documentation, please visit our website at samsunghvac.com or use our Samsung HVAC mobile app to download any technical documentation. Thank you.